Hi, I'm Kelly with Blue Water Photo, and today I want to take a look at the new housing from Nauticam for the Sony A7 II series of cameras. This housing is also fully functional with the A7R2 and A7S2. You can do everything on the camera despite the change in the mode dial that they made on the A7R and S2 cameras. Nauticam quickly responded, created a fix for that, and the housing works excellently. Let's take a quick look at the new cameras before we delve into the housing. The A7 II cameras build upon the popular A7 camera that Sony released last year. This camera was the first mirrorless body camera to have a full frame sensor. What this meant was smaller camera bodies than what you find in DSLRs, which is great for travel, higher, bigger sensor than what you see in the mirrorless cameras, which adds extra detail, more clarity, kind of overall excellent image resolution and quality, which is what a lot of people strive for. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in a smaller camera with a bigger sensor. Sony has also made a bunch of new lenses recently. So we've got a lot of the lenses we want to see underwater, like a fisheye option, a full macro option, things like that, which really makes the A7 and the A7 II series shine for underwater photography and great for traveling since it's a little bit lighter than your DSLR setup. One thing we have noticed for those DSLR users that are debating this camera is that the focus speed still is not quite there with the DSLRs, especially with the 90 millimeter macro lens. It's a little bit slower than what you would find in a DSLR, fairly comparable to what you see in many mirrorless cameras. So if you're thinking of upgrading from a mirrorless, you know, you're still getting good focus, you're getting the excellent, excellent image detail, and overall, it's a really great package. So if focus speed is not a deal breaker, this is definitely a camera to consider. The A7 II camera is 24 megapixels like the original A7. They have made some improvements in the camera body. It's a little bit bigger. It's got a built-in image stabilization and improved autofocus. For the A7R2, they upped the megapixels. So now you're looking at 42 megapixels versus the original 36. And the really nice improvement that I liked for underwater is that it's got a backlit sensor. And this means it really improves the low light capabilities of the camera. And then the third camera option is the A7S II, which is the low light beast. It's really designed for video. And what they've really improved with that camera is the ability to do 4K video and record it inside the camera. With the A7S, you could shoot 4K, but you had to have an external recorder connected, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, one note is that the A7R II also shoots 4K, although you get more options with the A7S II. So if you're not sure which body to buy, feel free to give us a call. If budget isn't an issue, I recommend the A7R2 because it does give you the best of both worlds with the high megapixel count, so you get a lot of really great image resolution and the ability to crop in without losing much detail. And the backlit sensor has the really nice low light capabilities, so it works well overall. Let's take a quick look at the Nauticam housing now. This guy is ergonomically designed, it is really nicely engineered, and it gives you full function of the camera easily underwater so that your diving and shooting experience is excellent. They've got a slightly larger port opening than their mirrorless cameras, which accommodates some of the larger lenses for Sony without having to put the lens on from the front, which is useful. They have ports that work with just about every lens you'd want to use underwater, including if you're using, say, Canon lenses with the Metabones adapters. Their port opening is very easy, just like their DSLR housings. You're gonna slide the lever down and it comes right off. There's no twisting of the port. You don't have to worry about accidentally snagging an O-ring while twisting or having to use a strap wrench or anything like that. To get the ports back on and locked, you just put it into place. It slides right in there and then it clicks and it's locked. And as long as this is locked in place, you know you're good to go. They do have fiber optic cable mounts on this housing. And if you're going, why? It doesn't have an internal flash. The question is because this housing is uh, compatible with their mini flash trigger for the Sony cameras. It's a little box that slides right onto the hot shoe here and has two LEDs. It works really great because it allows for quick recycling without having to use the bulky sync cords. You don't get TTL with this, it's just like a sync cord. You get manual control only for the strobe, but since most people shoot manual, it's not a problem. And it means you're not worrying about one other hole in the housing that could be a point of flooding or electronics in the sync cable that could fail. Fiber optic cables are pretty durable. They're light, they're small. It's a really nice way to go, especially if you're looking to save some weight when traveling. 
Your shutter on this housing is nice and easy to reach. You've also got controls for your AEL and your record button turned into simple levers. Aperture and shutter speed control are really easy to reach. They're nice dials. You can pretty much do all the main controls with this one hand. The housing includes two molded grips. They're also adjustable, so if you want to move the handles a little bit further away, so you have larger hands, you can do that. If we look at the back of the housing, you'll see that it's got all the controls you need, a nice little multi-wheel buttons, and they've got their leak detector vacuum system set up here, so that's the LED that would give you the green and red good check for the vacuum system. The vacuum system is a nice little accessory you can add on. It goes right into one of your bulkheads. Allows you to pull a vacuum on the housing so that you can kind of check the O-ring seal before you dive. You'll get a green LED that'll stay solid if the seal is good, and that means no air is escaping, which means your O-rings are good and you shouldn't have any floods when you're underwater. Opening the housing is very simple. They use the same style as their DSLRs, so two red buttons here, push those in, slide out the two levers, and then they lift right off. So it's, it's easy to do. The one thing you do wanna be careful with is making sure when you rinse the housing that you push these little red buttons in and out a bit to make sure there's no salt buildup or sand that gets stuck in the spring because they can get stuck in, which makes it a little hard to get the housing opened and closed and make sure it stays locked properly. You'll see there's a lot going on in here because they move some of these dials to the side of the housing to help make it easier for you to press. You've got your controls for the vacuum system and leak detector. And then on the other side here, we've got the locking camera tray. So slide this open, push in the little red guy and it pops right out, slides right in, snaps in place and then you lock it closed so you're good to go. Controls and everything are simple. They've got the nice gray O-ring, so it's also easy to see hair and grit since it's not black. You can tell if it's good to go. Closing the housing is just as easy as opening it. All you need to do, line everything up, make sure your camera's in appropriately and everything's locked where it should be. Slide this down and snap your two lever shot shut. They are locked, good to go, and you're ready to shoot. Overall, I really like the Nauticam housing. It does come with the two ball mounts, which is great, so you don't have to buy as many different accessories. It is small and lightweight. The zoom control is rubberized. It's very easy to turn all their dials. I'd say if you're looking for the oh, Sony A7 II camera, this is a great option for pairing it with underwater use. If you have any questions on the housing or great lenses to use or want to look at picking one of these guys up, Feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. You can find all our contact information on our website at www.bluewaterphotostore.com. Thanks so much for watching.